guys, so today we're going to talk about a country that not many people know about, and most people can't even find it on a map probably. It's one of the seven richest countries in the world, based on the level of income and the life of the population. Gasoline is cheaper than water, loans are interest-free, the government pays for utilities, and sometimes they don't even make loan takers pay their loans back. It's a phenomenal country that was brutally scorched and damaged by its neighbor 30 years ago. Today, skyscrapers grow faster than mushrooms, super expensive and exclusive car sales are greater than your wildest imagination, and each citizen receives, get this, one servant and 1.5 migrant workers. And the dinar is the most valuable currency in the world. This is Kuwait. So in 1961, Kuwait was freed from its British protectorate and became an independent country. However, it didn't form a good relationship with its neighbors Iraq and Saudi Arabia easily. The Iraqi occupation damaged Kuwait and destroyed its promising growth. The capital Al-Kuwait was pillaged and most of the native population fled to Saudi Arabia or other bordering countries with thousands of Kuwaiti dying. Now, despite the huge loss, Kuwait recovered in just a few years to its previous flourishing state. So huge oil reserves let the citizens live and give themselves whatever they wanted. Kuwait is about the size of Montenegro, and it's home to just 3.5 million people, with only 1 million of them being citizens. This golden million receives oil profits. For example, a young couple receives a $25,000 gift from the government for weddings, and a doctor's or teacher's salary is $15,000 per month. It's worth noting that the country's citizens only occupy high-paying or leadership positions. Land is very cheap for the locals, too. With a $250,000 mortgage offered with 0% interest, and half of the debt probably being waived after 5 to 10 years. Medicine and education are completely free. Students studying abroad have their flights and tuition paid for by the government, along with a $2,000 stipend. That's a lot of ramen. Now, if a Kuwaiti is sick and can't be treated at home, the government will pay for their treatment in any country, as well as for all the expenses for the accompanying relatives. Allowances for children are $200 and are paid until the child isn't really a child anymore at 26 years old. A sum of $1,400 is paid to divorced women monthly until she finds work, and the minimum pension is $3,000. So in 2007, the government took an unprecedented step in world history by waiving a total debt from its citizens of one billion, with a B, dollars. Sometimes they just give money out. For example, in order of 50 years of independence, they gave everyone three and a half thousand dollars. Last year, anyone who wanted could receive primary needs of goods for free like rice and butter, some vegetables, and some other things. The monthly wage for a master's student is $700, with $1,400 for PhD students. Teachers receive a one-time premium for their length of service, measuring 18 salaries after 30 years for men and 25 years for women. Additionally, every Kuwaiti on average receives an extra 50% in bonuses on top of their salary. Now, all of these bonuses are only given to citizens. There's hardly any taxes in Kuwait for foreigners, too. Companies that trade in the country pay 4% of their profits, which is quite insignificant. So native Kuwaitis make up about a third of the population, and they are the citizens. The other two-thirds are not citizens. As a rule, these are foreign specialists and workers that live in the country on a visa or residency. So Kuwait is one of a few countries whose citizenship is almost impossible to receive for immigrants. Now, the cost of living in Kuwait is lower than in, in expense of Qatar or UAE, and the salaries for foreign workers are higher. The quality of life in Kuwait is similar to that of European countries. The entire oil industry belongs to the government. It was taken from the English after obtaining independence and now all the oil goes straight to the coffers. The exact amount needed for a good existence is drilled out. The Quran forbids making money on money, 
meaning giving loans with interest. The Emir gave the Kuwaiti many good things, like free education, and the government pays even more for the especially gifted, such as their education in the world's leading universities. Unemployment payments are $800, and the minimum salary for government work is $2,500. The average salary for foreign workers is about $1,000. Now, the government gives loans up to $1 million for building private homes, which is usually enough for homes with all the amenities in five rooms. But most important, when oil prices on the world market grow, the Emir forgives all debts and loans, meaning the Kuwaiti literally pray for oil prices to rise. Kuwait isn't a city you'd go to see works of art or ruins of ancient cities. Kuwait is a huge shopping mall in the desert, where full and lazy Kuwaitis roam and where you can buy everything in a supermarket from Eastern sweets to uh, couture items. So all foreign companies that work in Kuwait legally should have a certain percent of locals working in their company, with quite respectable salaries at that. One entrepreneur wrote, I hired a Kuwaiti worker for my factory with a $10,000 salary and another couple of Indians in his place for a pittance because the Kuwaiti doesn't come to work and firing him is impossible. Moreover, when the administration needs his signature for some documents, they call him at home and ask him to come sign. He simply says, no, you need to come here. When they arrive, they're met by a sleepy, plump Kuwaiti who can't even write and just draws an X. But Kuwait has strict laws such as one forbidding criticizing the Emir in the Constitution. Recently, Kuwait has actively fought criticism of the government in microblogs. Also, in 2016, five people, including the Emir's relatives, were arrested for writing about the government unflatteringly. Recently, a judge sentenced a local to five years in prison for offending the Emir Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah on Twitter. Additionally, a local journalist was sentenced to two years in prison for criticism on Twitter. If that leads you to drink, well, <laughs> you have to go somewhere else. Kuwait has absolutely zero alcohol, and it can't be bought anywhere. If you wanted to bring it across the border, it will be taken, and you'll be sent home. But women don't have any limitations on what they can wear. Each Kuwait citizen is fairly rich and doesn't have to worry about their future, a roof over their head, or food on the table, and also has their own servant. Now, if you go to the market or a shop, you might notice how a servant with a basket follows the men in white thobs or women in black hijabs. The master simply points to which fruit they like and pay the vendor, while the servant picks up and carries the fruits. If you want to know how much money the people have, just go into a jewelry store. You won't find any thin gold chains or tiny rings. The walls will be full of massive gold chains costing over $10,000, as well as rings with large diamonds or other precious gems. On this YouTube channel, what have we always said is the most important thing? Well, it's the same in Kuwait, family. Family is the center of life in Kuwait. Family members spend a lot of free time together, and relatives can be frequently seen working in one company. Kuwaitis are also very hospitable, so don't be surprised if you're invited to dinner at 11 p.m. The time before dinner? Well, that's time to talk. They traditionally sit on pillows on the floor, and you should eat with your right hand because the left is unclean. Overall, rules of living in Kuwait are fairly simple. Don't drink alcohol or do drugs that are illegal here, and don't criticize the government. Kuwait is a contentious country. It's a monarchical paradise on earth where people live in plenty, but they still do have to pay for it with their silence. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like, comment, let me know, would you be willing to live in Kuwait? And we'll see you again next time.